guys, it's me, Bish. Welcome to Get Life Podcast. And we are doing some Tokyo Game Show coverage today. And we are here with Jacob. Hello, what's up? Yeah, as you guys know, Jacob has been on this podcast so many times, but he's also part of this I'm podcast. I'm the new so main host. Sense. You are the main host. Is that what you're trying the to say? The new main host. The new main host. So am I going to get kicked out of this podcast? Is that what it is? Yeah, bye. Okay. Well, um, that was uh, that was a podcast. We'll leave it to Jacob for the rest <laughs> of the episode. And apparently he's just taken over the podcast. If you guys actually want to see more of Jacob, tell us. I don't mind recording with Jacob. He's actually a pleasure to record with. So, oh, Jacob, thank you. You're welcome. Tokyo Game Show this year. For those that don't know, usually it's been a podcast policy for how long never to talk about events if we are not at events. Usually we don't do Tokyo Game Show coverage, but because of coronavirus, it's been a very shit time for all of us. I thought, you know what? We should have a little bit of fun. We should watch Tokyo Game Show. I've been watching the live streams, not for every company, mainly just for Koei, because I've been waiting for this day for a long time. So before we get into the main bulk of the discussion, I just want to thank our sponsors, Crunchyroll, Japan Crate, and JList. And yeah, Jacob. I'm a sponsor now. Jacob is a sponsor of the podcast. Wow, I didn't know this, but I actually I wanted didn't to either. say, I'm sorry, Jacob, you're just going to have to fund us, man. You're, you're the sugar daddy of the podcast. Jacob, you've seen other live streams today, correct in saying that? Yeah, I've, well, not just today. I think, yes, was it yesterday or two days ago, I watched the Nier oh, stream okay. because I'm a huge Nier fan. And also today I also watched the Koei Tecmo stream on the right. I watched um, Sega and Atlas. So it was like... <laughs> split screen for me okay so when you mean the koei tecmo stream was it like the general koei tecmo stream or the main tgs event it was the one where it was like that are alive extreme what's it called venus vacation or something venus vacation that was the one that i was watching to be honest with you i have not seen any other tokyo game show events other than the koei ones and the reason that is is because i assumed that we were going to get a dynasty warriors announcement today because i tweeted about this last week when the announcement times were going to be and when the events were going to be i looked back at my tweet and i was like shit it's tomorrow so the day that we're recording this is actually 26th of september straight after the hyrule warriors event finished but i did watch that koei event as well the initial koei event it wasn't that good in my opinion it seemed very boring especially when they were getting into dead or alive a dream 3 venus vacation or whatever for me it was like meh it wasn't bad per se but it was, for me it was underwhelming and didn't they announce like a new romance of the kingdom gasha mobile game or something i believe they did yeah they they announced a new romance of the three kingdoms game which yes does have gacha mechanics there are for example you can get ssrs of characters which makes sense because obviously those games kind of rely a lot on its artwork if you've ever played romance of three kingdoms you can tell that they they go really heavy on the artwork and stuff i don't know if you know that game where it's like it's set in like feudal japan but in the future for instance i think nobunaga would have like a laser gun or something what the fuck yeah, there's there's one. I don't know what it's called right Is now. It made but like, by Koei? Yeah, and it, I think it's only available in, in Japan. But like, I remember like briefly trying it. Was it good? Well, it just played like any other romance of the of the Three Kingdoms games or Nobunaga no Yabo games. See, that seems very interesting. Like in set in the future. Part of me wants to see a Samurai Warriors game set in the future, but with those characters. You know what I want to see? A second Pokemon Conquest game. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. For Switch. It is very interesting because Nintendo and Koei are very tight recently. So we might see more crossovers in the future. And we might see another thing with Game Freak like Pokemon Conquest. I would love to see Pokemon Conquest. Like either a remaster or a sequel. A remaster on the Switch would be great. And the best thing about it is that obviously we saw a lot of other remasters coming to the Switch in terms of uh, Monster Farm, aka Monster Rancher. With the games that we're going to be talking about today, I think there's also a lot of other things that Koei announced. But some of the things, as you said, kind of focuses on the gacha mechanics, kind of focuses on mobile games a lot more. For example, another Ken's Rage game. It's just been announced, but it was, I think it's Japan only, and it's basically a port of the original game on the PlayStation 3, making its way to phones, which I don't know. What do you kind of think about that? Because if that kind of works, do you think we're going to see like other Musou games coming to phones? Like maybe Samurai Warriors, Dynasty Warriors? We already have Dynasty Warriors on mobile phones. Like there was this one that, what was it called? Unleashed or was that for the PS Vita? No, Next was for PS Vita. I think Unleashed is is um, phones. Because I remember playing Unleashed when it first came out 
then basically it's like it made me wonder like why does this game have a like a gacha mechanic because like to me it doesn't really make sense and i think that's where it's gonna go to be honest with you because with a lot of mobile games especially japanese ones that's just the way that they're gonna sell the games if they're gonna make the game free you're gonna have to heavily rely on gacha and if i'm not mistaken there's another um, dynasty warriors style game bunch of dynasty warriors warriors games and uh, mobile games in japan that i saw i think there's like patches lot um then i think there might be round based dynasty warriors mobile games mm. like there's so many Dyn uh, dynasty warriors games in japan that just make you go like what you know that it would barely be successful over here also i i have to say like when i played dynasty warriors unleashed and i saw like the gacha mechanic right and no matter like what rarity the character had that you pulled they they only had like random pokemon stuff i guess like it sounds a bit ignorant i guess but like to, for dynasty warriors i'm just so more into like being able to equip like strong weapons without having to worry about attributes and just hacking through the enemy i agree with you on that and why that system hasn't returned even in dynasty warriors 9 but that system kind of works more for mobile games because it, as you said it is a pokemon style rock paper scissors mechanic and we have seen it in games like persona as well has a similar mechanic so yeah you make a good point I'd, i would rather just have that ability just to equip any weapons you want without wondering oh i have to think about this and that no i just want to get into the game play it when you pull a character um they had that element assigned to them but like they always look the same for instance in there there's like so many gacha games out there you know that and there's like characters of the highest rarity and they come with like the most flashy costumes or like mm. And for Dynasty Warriors Unleashed, it was just like, no matter what, they always looked the same. And they always had like that particular element color palette to them. For instance, um, Shenji got like a red mm. dress for that one. And then she got a blue and then she got a green, whatever. That was it. And it didn't matter if she was like one star or like five stars or whatever. And I'm like, if you're gonna do something like that, then you better make the cards worth the money. And not just go, oh, well, it's better because it's a higher rarity. No, you better pull off something flashy that'll make the people go, wow, I need this. And it made me like, Ugh. No, nah, I'm not doing this. When I'm thinking about gacha games, I think about games like Love Live, right? So I was kind of expecting, at least with Dynasty Warriors Unleashed, to get, like, as you said, flashy costumes or other pieces of artwork, right? That is associated with those higher ranked characters or more rare characters. But it's unfortunate that we didn't see that. What I really wanted to focus on is, you know, Ken's rage. In the past, I thought it was with sega i thought the license for fist of the north star went to sega so i don't know how koei has got it to make a remake on phones and i don't know why they didn't decide to do like a ps4 version or at least a ps5 version which we'll be talking about later for ps5 games it seems very odd to me and i think the initial sort of stream from koei was quite weak like there were some games that were seemed very interesting like i said in terms of monster rancher considering that game was a ps1 game and it's making its way to the switch only in japan at the moment comes west i really do anyone that's listening and they want these games to come overseas we have to come as a community and just say hey guys we would really like these games to come overseas because they're not going to unless people want them and Koei would need to have that sort of evidence to back it up. Otherwise, we're not going to get those games. So if you want to see games like Monster Rancher come over to the Switch in the West, even if it is Japanese audio only, then I think that would just be great. You just guys have to just say to Koei that you want it and do so in a polite way. But the rest of the stream was kind of... Ugh, I wasn't really into it. I understand the appeal for some people for the Dead or Alive a Venus Vacation stream, but it's a game that is on the PC. I get it. It's a gacha game. Cool. But it just seemed very boring it was more of the same stuff and it wasn't really that appealing to me i understand the game does have its appeal to certain types of audiences to me looking at it i wasn't really interested in the fact that oh you can change mary rose's dress so that the strap comes off when you're taking a picture i wasn't really interested in that what you have to um take into account is that often for like gacha games or mobile games or stuff like that um if streams for them happen they're usually also like to hype people up constantly to be like this game's still alive and you're gonna get rewards just because this stream is happening and i also saw that i think now there's like a temple campaign just because of the stream or like because it was on the stream the game and because 
because they announced so much new stuff, I guess. I, I don't play that game, I'm sorry. You could tell that people were still, like, hyped for it, even if it was just, like, people who are, like, who live in Japan and only play it there. I personally don't know anyone who plays that game. Like, I think I tried it, like, once. To me, it's like, if I can just buy the PS4 version or something, I'm gonna get that and I'm not gonna invest in like bikini gotchas or something like that, you know? For me, Dead or Alive Extreme is more like a like a casual free time game, if you know what I mean. Like for me, it's not something like where I would say, okay, I like need every costume in this game or like I need to try out everything there is. For me, it's more like a leisure game. And it's like, there. it's for me, it's just, it's just not it. <laughs> What's very interesting about that game is the fact that it is on Steam and it's you can also purchase it from i think uh, dmm I'm, I'm not sure but with that game there was a similar console version to it on the switch and the ps4 i can't remember i think one of them is called scarlet and i can't remember what the other one is called they came out with extreme 3 and then they were like okay like it seems to be successful so let's port it to i guess what what did they port it to do to switch yeah, it came on the Switch with all like DLC and stuff and, and some new features with the Joy-Cons. I think it has like HD rumble and all that kind of stuff. Also, I have to admit that I actually wanted to like, like I, like I still have a love for the DOA and like also DOA Extreme series. So I'm still like, someday I want to get it, but not right now. <laughs> even if it's probably not even that expensive anymore. I'm very confused at how Koei Tecmo really is getting more focus on this game rather than DOA 6, because I believe they've stopped support for DOA 6. I'm not mistaken. Maybe there is some sort of updates that come out, but they don't even do DLC for that game anymore. They ended it with one more new character that came even from DOA Extreme 3, and they're focusing more on that. And I think that's probably because their community is spending more money on the Extreme Paradise games as opposed to the mainline Dead or Alive game. And I think in the future, when, when they're making games like Dead or Alive 7, that they should consider Dead or Alive as a fighting game first and foremost, and then keep all the fan service to paradise and that's how i think it should be treated as you mentioned before a, a gotcha game right like mm -hmm. something that's available for free or like most of the time available for free at least because like the thing is with games like those like you as i said before you constantly need to like give the people the players something to like keep playing it to like keep the appeal up and we also see that with new characters like how many new characters did that has that game gotten by now it's like five new characters that were not in like any fighting games before some of them actually have become dlc for dead or alive 6 which i honestly love you have to take into account that the gacha game is like mostly just for the japanese audience which is why they're like okay we know what works here well for doa 6 it went global and we keep seeing a lot of hardcore DOA fans on Twitter. Like, you either hate it or love it. And a lot of people are like, yeah, this game is amazing. I love it. And then there's people who just like put down like almost every single aspect of the game, which kind of like gets the whole thing just like shaking. And they're like, okay, you know what? Let's just end support for this because we have no idea how this is going to turn out. And it might cost us more money than it will bring us in. Mm while for Dead or Alive Extreme Vacation, whatever, it's like, we know what who the audience is, we know what they want, we know what they pay for, so let's give it to them and cash in, it's obvious. And I'm also not saying that they're wrong with that, because like, for real, if I was them, I would do the same probably. Mm. As long as it gets me money. Oh yeah, definitely. That being said, we're going to go on a little break. And then when we return from the break, from the ad break, we are going to talk a little bit about Atelier Riser. So we'll see you on the other side. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Crunchyroll. Go and check them out at getlifepodcast.com forward slash Crunchyroll for a 14 day free trial of Crunchyroll premium service that means anime without ads 1080p hd you can watch it on all your favorite devices your tvs your phones whatever even if you want to watch it on your chromecast you can as well that's amazing go and check them out 14 day free trial you've got the most diverse collection of anime and manga on the internet so go and check them out it's a no-brainer lads getlifepodcast.com forward slash crunchyroll thank you crunchyroll for sponsoring this episode of the podcast 
This episode of the podcast is also brought to you by the lovely people at Japan Crate. Japan Crate offers a unique experience of Japan through monthly crates filled with candy. And who doesn't love candy, right? Japan Crate brings you a delicious selection of snacks every month. You can check it out on our YouTube channel for $35 a month and you can cancel anytime. But I don't know why you would want to. Learn more at getlifepodcast.com forward slash Japan Crate. Remember, use the code GALP for $3 off on new subscriptions. So, getlifepodcast.com forward slash Japan Crate. Use the code GALP for $3 off. And if you want to check out what snacks that you get in the crates, go and check out our YouTube channels. Links will be in the description. So, go and check them out. Thank you, Japan Crate, for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Okay, we are back. That was only like two seconds for us and like five minutes for you guys. So, Jacob, yeah. what do you think about Riser? Just as a little of an intro to it, have you played the original Riser? I don't think I have. You own the game, right? I honestly don't know. I think you do. I think you... If, you I, if I do, I think it's digital. I think so, because I own the game on the Switch. I think I own all of the more recent Tillier games that were re-released on the Switch. So I've got Rorona. I've, I fell in love with Riser because it's it's very different from previous Atelier games right in the sense that there is a focus on alchemy and if you know how to to do all of that you can get very in-depth with it but I don't have time to synthesize items I genuinely don't and I actually hate that about certain RPGs and that's why I don't play them and the fact that usually Atelier has this weird sort of color palette it's it's kind of dingy and gray and like sort of darker brown colors but Riser had this sort of day and night cycle and it seems very airy very like breezy and I like that and also the character designs are great as well so i'm very excited for atelia riser 2 i don't know there's something about the game there is just something about it and about the scenery that is just very attractive what are your thoughts on the game like just looking at it are you excited are you like no i'm gonna skip this one out what i was thinking when i watched the trailer it was like this has so many so many new features compared to like older atelier games because like i did play i didn't finish them but like i did play like the most of the atelier games that i mentioned before and most of them you could just like the only things you could like m do like with mo mobility was like run around, jump and attack the enemy and will gather in ingredients. With Ryza you can like swim and like... Yes. I saw that where she's like on the mountain and she's just like close to like the edge and she's just like, you know, sliding mm. on the edge up to the next part of the mountain because otherwise she wouldn't be able to cross there. And I was like, how does, how did I not get to play like this before? It does seem really cool. And it, it also gives, a, for me, it gives me darker vibes, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah, in terms of story, right? Yeah, it seems like compared to the older Atelier games, it seems more like an RPG, which I actually don't mind. The thing is, like for me, the Atelier games, they're super great, but to me, they're like very time consuming. Mm. Like very time consuming. Yes. Like gathering all the ingredients, alchemy, all that. It's it's fun. It's super fun. But for me, it's also like I just don't have the attention span for that. So it's like that's actually I think that's on me or like the people who cannot get into that kind of thing. Overall, I do like the series. I do think they're great games and they're also so beautiful to look at. Like the character designs and like the design of like the just the maps and the world itself is like breath taking honestly yeah and i think gust has learned quite a lot because my impression for previous atelier games is the fact that the gameplay seems very similar to one another at least from what i've played of oh, previous games yeah. before before riser and i know a lot of people kind of give criticism to dynasty warriors and say it's the same game just over and over again but i feel that atelier kind of feels like that for me so i wasn't really interested in it before riser so riser as you said has some very amazing graphics and not even just graphics just scenery in the game is beautiful and the way that particle effects are in this game even in the first one even in the second one it's fantastic transitions between overworld into battles is very seamless so i like that kind of stuff and you did mention new features so there is quite a lot of new features within this game i, I we didn't really touch on alchemy within the uh, trailers or anything like that but the one thing that sticks out to me is the ability to ride that animal thing that was quite interesting it's a, it's summoning a monster on the field and it can dig to find spots for items and stuff like that and also the swimming mechanic i've yeah. never seen an rpg 
I know this is like a JRPG, and this might be something that is existing already, but I've never seen a JRPG that actually forces you to swim to get to new areas of the map. So it kind of makes it feel as if the map is huge. Because if you had a small map, there's no need to put water elements in there. But it's even the smaller things, like when she goes to swim, her clothes aren't just dry. They are soaked, right? And I know some people will be like, oh, that's just for fan service. But it's also about the level of detail and the level of realism in this yeah, game. Honestly, just anyone's going to get soaked if they're jumping into water and swimming for like even just seconds they're like immediately drenched like it, it's it's just real yeah it's real even her hair i'm looking at screenshots now even her hair gets soaked it's not like she her hair is like all shiny and shit it gets soaked as well and i think there is that level of of realism there and the fact that you could just dive as well that seems very interesting to me and i think that's for me, as someone who's never really liked the Atelier series, once again, I have to preface this. I did enjoy Riser, but before that, I didn't really necessarily like the series. I think that this game, for people that are new to the Atelier series, this game is for you. Just to try it. And it's very interesting now that Koei, as they announced this game, announced a price cut on Steam. So I believe the original Riser is like 39% off. So take that advantage, buy the game, play it, see how you feel about it, and then work your way to the second game because there is also save data bonus so if you own the first game on a particular console you'll get the existing costumes in the second game so that's also very interesting as well nowadays i'm mostly like okay this game is like it looks great but i'll probably wait for a price cut that's just how i am nowadays it's more like if there's no game that's like seriously like something that i've been waiting for for like literally years like persona 5 for instance it's not immediately day one if i I'm too interested in it. I can't just go out and buy every little game that's out on day one. Like, I just can't. I might get it if I if I do think like, okay, it looks great. And if I do get it, I'll probably play the first game first and then continue with two, since that just makes sense to me. Like, if there's a sequel, I think it's good to play the first game first, okay. you know? I'll be probably getting this game just for reviewing so i will be getting this game i don't know where or how i'm going to get this game in terms of what console is going to be but either way it seems very interesting because this game is going to be released on the playstation 5 which is a huge thing because to my knowledge this is the first koei tecmo game at least that is announced so far that will be making an appearance on the ps5 this game atelier riser 2 will be making an appearance on ps5 and i have some confirmation so i just want to thank um black kite at bk2128 on twitter go check him out because he's been translating and doing live tweeting on tokyo game show i confirmed with him basically that there is a small little detail at the bottom of the announcement uh, posters and stuff that says the game has cross purchase available so if you buy the game on ps4 you will get the ps5 version if you're going to think about getting a ps5 then this might be the thing for you. And it also works out a lot cheaper because the PS5 version of the game costs 8,500 yen. How much? 70 euro. I think it's more than 70. Today's exchange rate, it's around 70 euro or uh, $80 US uh, thereabouts. In the UK, it is actually 61 British pounds. Obviously, these aren't official uh, prices for those regions, but considering that Sony did say that prices for PS5 games can go up to 70 euro, we will be seeing games priced at that price point. But 60 pounds for a game oh, for PS5 seems quite a lot. 70 euro for a game seems quite a lot. I'm assuming the... Um, ps4 version will be costing around maybe 50 euro i don't know how much do games cost like brand new like koei games on the ps4 if you wanted to save like 10 bucks you could buy the game on the ps4 and then you get the free upgrade to the ps5 i don't know what we're gonna get in terms of review codes that's not something that we will know they might give us a ps4 code and then it works on our ps5s that could be yeah. something it might make more sense logistically considering that the game does have a free ps5 upgrade and it also allows reviewers to compare the game on both consoles with one code if that makes sense so I could see that actually happening. Part of me wanted to get the game on Switch just because I have all of the other games on the Switch, even Atelier the Riser, the first one, and I wanted that bonus, but I'm not going to get it. If I get it on PS5 or PS4, I'm not going to get that uh, costume bonus. And I, I was hoping that I could, but 
it's not something that you can buy it's only done via save data we've seen koei do that before other than that there's not much to say about riser 2 the game is coming out on the 3rd of december with gust i'm not gonna worry about how they design their games they know how to make beautiful games like we've seen it with fairy tale we've seen it with blue reflection stuff like that and they've learned a lot over this console generation and i'm pretty happy that they're going to bring more games to pc and i'm also pretty happy that they're going to take their game up for the ps5 so they've learned a lot within that playstation 4 console generation and they're using it to improve so the next thing is we're going to go on another break and we're going to be talking about hyrule warriors 2 or aka zelda muso age of calamity so we will get back on in a second this episode of the podcast is brought to you by the wonderful people at JList. JList brings you the latest anime and otaku goods from Japan directly. Well, that's anime, manga, cosplay, import game, visual novels. JList has got you covered. Learn more at getlifepodcast.com forward slash JList. And remember to use our link and the code GALP for 5% off on all purchases on JList. That's including pre-orders remember getlifepodcast.com forward slash jlist thank you very much jlist for sponsoring this episode of the podcast hello this is just a reminder for you guys to check out our discord page if you go to getlifepodcast.com forward slash discord join our discord page join in on all the discussions that we're going to be having whether it's in our gaming channel our anime channel go check us out there hopefully in the future we'll be doing our giveaways all podcast giveaways will be done via discord as well so make sure you join in on the fun in addition to that make sure you follow us on twitter at get Life podcast if you like what you see here follow us on twitter we'll be posting new episodes videos announcements things like that on twitter as well so be sure to check out our twitter page if you want to be notified of all those kind of stuff anyway back on to the episode okay we are back jacob hyrule warriors have you played the first one i have i've never really finished it like 100 percent. me neither but i did play it it was an interesting game I actually got, I think, the special edition with the scarf. Oh, okay. You know what? I was looking at the live stream. If I'm not mistaken, they were selling the, the treasure boxes in um, MCM. Yeah. I, you, I think that was the one that we were there, no? I think so. It was in 2014. Yeah, so I think that's when I met you, actually. So I'm not sure if the first or the second time, but they were selling it and i didn't i didn't have a switch i actually i don't think even the switch was launched at that point i didn't have a wii u or anything i didn't have a switch or anything like that and then i saw i was watching live stream with uh, georgina today and she sees the the guy coming in with the scarf one of the omega force guys and she was like i want to get that scarf and i was like what and she was like yeah man I, I like the legend of zelda merchandise i've just never played any of the games so i just gave her the switch now and i was like dude play hyrule warriors play breath of the wild and she's right now she's that's what she's doing she's playing She's playing Hyrule Warriors and she's playing Breath of the Wild to get hyped for this game. Hyrule Warriors 2 looks very, very interesting. The first game was interesting in the sense that I never understood why Koei made a Zelda game to begin with. Like, it doesn't make much sense. But then now looking at it, it seems like it was to make its way for this game, if that makes sense. Like, it seems like it was all done in preparation so that when they make this sort of Breath of the Wild prequel, that it actually does play well. So they take a lot of inspiration from the original Hyrule Warriors. Uh, it's obviously Hyrule Warriors, the original, is not canon. There are characters that don't exist within the Zelda universe officially. Uh, characters like Linkel. And we won't see her in this game, probably, unless she's there as DLC or anything like that. But it takes in a lot of stuff from the previous game. Uh, looking at the gameplay footage from, you know, Hyrule Warriors 2, Age of Calamity, it, they are going to be featuring the champions from the original Breath of the Wild and stuff like that. So you're going to see Mifa, Daruk, Rivali, and Urbosas there as playable characters, which we did predict in our previous episode with Chris Gildart, which is, should be very interesting because I'm not sure if you played the original Breath of the Wild, have you? Or I do have it, yeah, but I've like I just haven't had time to play it much. I see I come off like a, a such a fake gamer on this episode. <laughs> like, like I don't really I just don't have as much time as I used to, sadly. You know what, Jacob? I don't think that makes you a fake gamer. I you know what it is, right? There's a lot of people that are gonna be buying this new uh Breath of the Wild prequel right Hyrule Warriors 2 people are gonna a lot of people are gonna buy it without knowing the first Hyrule Warriors or without even playing any Dynasty Warriors style games at all and there's a lot of hype behind it and like when I saw the announcement I was like oh my god we're gonna see a lot of people that have shitted on games 
like Dynasty Warriors play this game and say it's amazing. And I looked at the gameplay, it looks amazing, don't get me wrong, but it seems like more of the same. Mainly with Link's gameplay, it looks like his same or similar moveset from the original Hyrule Warriors, but with some new additions, stuff like shield surfing uh, returns from Breath of the Wild, the parachute from Breath of the Wild, also or the paraglider, sorry, from Breath of the Wild returns as well, and the use of bombs, the use of uh, ice make abilities, and cryo abilities that basically allows you to freeze characters in place in boss battles, etc. And stuff like that is very inspiring to see that the, the fact that they are bringing in all these different things from Breath of the Wild and also stuff from the original Hyrule Warriors into this game and making it amazing. But to me, I think a lot of people will be more interested in the story, unfortunately, rather than the gameplay. The gameplay doesn't seem like something that people are going to buy this game for. I imagine the Musou fans, you know, people like me, Chris Gildart, or any of, you know, the, the Kobe Tecmo family, they're going to buy this game for the Musou elements, right? But the wider fan base are going to buy it just so they can see how the champions were as characters, because we're going to see a lot of character development for those champions. We're going to see a lot more voice lines for those champions. And we're going to see, I'm presuming, we're going to see how those champions die. And I know that sounds really depressing and really, you know, will die. So yeah, I get it. But I mean, it sounds bad for me to say that, but the game had them, you know, their deaths in the, in the original Breath of the Wild was something that was very um, focused on, heavily focused on. So of course, I would assume that we would see how they, how valiantly they fought uh, in that war against Ganon. It's seems like very interesting to me because i've never really played a zelda game before actually hyrule warriors was my first zelda game the original and then i played breath of the wild so for me i'm not too well versed on the game i'm just looking at it as a muso game it looks fantastic the certain elements do return the music is different as well although they have got a lot of different permissions from nintendo and they've been like remixing tracks from breath of the wild etc but there's also new composed music that basically nintendo really haven't had any sort of say on and i think that's very interesting because the live stream today was a koei tecmo live stream it wasn't a nintendo live stream the people that were there on the table describing the game or showing off gameplay there was no nintendo employees so we didn't see any nintendo members of staff there present they may have been present in the audience but we just didn't see them on screen we saw hayashi san who is the i think the studio lead for team ninja we also saw some people from koei tecmo in general and also um, omega force to me it seems like this is a very hands-on koei tecmo thing maybe nintendo saw you know how well they did with hyrule warriors and uh, fire emblem emblem three houses and even fire emblem warriors and they were like hey you guys have full reign i don't know how the story is going to be i'm not sure if the story is going to be written by nintendo staff or if koei is going to be collaborating with the story or if koei is just focusing on gameplay i don't know how that's going to work out and we don't really get that much information on that because the game is not going to be published by koei at least from my knowledge the game is not going to be published by koei in europe and in the us that's all going to be dealt with by nintendo of america and nintendo of Europe. In the Japanese live stream, it seems that Koei is dealing a lot more in terms of the publishing side. I'm not sure if that is actually the case, but they have a lot of special pre-order bonuses and stuff like that for this game in particular. I was very excited more so for characters like Impa because she's got a new design. Her previous design was, I would say, more akin to her more traditional design in the previous games that she appeared in. And in this game, she has that sort of Breath of the Wild look, which makes sense. And at first, I assumed it was Impa. They didn't say who the character was initially, but she looked like the grand daughter Impa's granddaughter in Breath of the Wild so I was like oh that that's probably Impa right her movesets look insane the fact that she can like summon multiples of herself and use like this crazy ninjutsu and she kind of has like the cards that like Zuo Chi has so it kind of reminds me of characters like Zuo Chi and like you know Cao Cao in Dynasty Warriors 8 how he his sword can summon like multiples of himself and stuff like that when I see stuff like that when I see those kind of movesets and and those kind of things like that I'm like well this is taken straight out of Dynasty Warriors and, and people People aren't even noticing that you know the the cards that she has is very reminiscent of zuo chi you know the fact that she can summon multiples of herself is something that's been re recurring in games like samurai warriors and dynasty warriors and the fact that there was like one um attack that she did i'm not sure if it was in visible in the trailer or not there's one attack that she did that's like very fast and it kind of reminds me of Zhu Shu, his Muso. You know what I'm talking about, where he has like all those different slashes at once and he's like bouncing across the screen or something. It's very reminiscent of that. Wasn't that wasn't that introduced in Dynasty Warriors 
seven or eight empires. It was seven empires when he was yeah, yeah. because I remember overusing that move set as hell. There is also some certain features that I also want to talk about. For example, a lot of stuff returns from Breath of the Wild. We did mention the cryo abilities and freezing and, and all that kind of stuff. But there's also smaller abilities that are returning. Shield surfing is returning from Breath of the Wild, but it looks like it is integrated into the moveset of Link when he's using the sword and the shield. It's also confirmed within this game that Link has multiple movesets according to which weapon is selected. His spear moveset looks very reminiscent of characters like Zhao Yun from the Dynasty Warriors series, which is pretty cool actually. In addition to that, each one of the champions has their own unique way of using the Sheikah Slate. So for example, the Cryo ability, Link can use it for aerial attacks, Impa uses it to slide around which is pretty cool. Um, so it ranges between different characters. So even when the characters are using these special abilities like Cryo, etc., they use them in a different way. It's not a cloned moveset, which is very interesting. And I, I do enjoy that. Another thing that does return from games like Hyrule Warriors is character switching. So you have multiple characters. It seems to be the case looking at the screenshots and at the gameplay that depending on the mission, you can have maybe three characters that you can switch between on the maps. The maps do look a lot smaller, very reminiscent of games like Samurai Warriors, which is good. Other characters have certain special abilities, keeping in line with their abilities in Breath of the Wild. For example, Daruk, uh, he has the ability in which he can protect himself by rolling, and he also has the shield that he has himself. Um, that sort of magical barrier that he has that is mentioned in Breath of the Wild. Uh, in addition to that, if you have save data bonus from uh, Breath of the Wild, you get the training sword and the shield. So it's basically the wooden, the wooden sword and wooden shield. You get that as a, a save data bonus. I'm not sure whether or not there is a save data bonus for actually having Hyrule Warriors. Probably not, but yeah, it seems pretty cool. Finally, the last thing that I want to talk about today is Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires. It was announced. It wasn't what we expected. A lot of us did expect a Dynasty Warriors remastered. We got two announcements. We got a new Dynasty Warriors mobile game, which is apparently a definitive mobile game action game featuring Dynasty Warriors characters. I'm not really too interested in that because we might not even get it overseas. There's nothing announced on that. We haven't had any press releases for that. However, Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires or Shinsangoku Muso 8 Empires is going to be releasing early 2021. I would imagine uh, either quarter one or quarter two. There is no definitive date on that. And it will be coming on the PS5, PS4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Steam. So it's basically going to cover next gen and current gen as well. It's very interesting to me that Koei announced a Empires game as their next gen introduction for Shinsangoku Muso. It seems very interesting. It seems very odd as well at the same time. And the reason why I say that is because, first of all, not everyone decides to go in for the Empire games and secondly it's Dynasty Warriors 9. I would have assumed that Koei would have skipped Dynasty Warriors 9 and gone with Dynasty Warriors 10 just because Dynasty Warriors 9 is already open world it already kind of feels like Empires anyway when you're fighting the battles and there's certain little bases that you have to take over very similar to Empires as I mentioned in my written review on the website. It seems very odd that they went for this decision. It is confirmed however that the game is not going to have open world mechanics so I don't know how that's going to work if it's going to keep the battles in stages which would be very interesting because that's really what i wanted from dynasty warriors 9 to begin with there is no information on whether or not the weapons are going to be changing if we're going to return to more classic style weapons from dynasty warriors 8 or if we're going to stick to the cloned weapons that we've been seeing in dynasty warriors 9 i hope we don't get them in addition to that two player split screen is also confirmed within dynasty warriors 9 empires as well as a creator warrior system that is based on neo 2 for example you can edit the body shape costume parts, colors, materials in more detail. And I think that's pretty good on that part. Looking at it, it looks fantastic. Looking at the screenshots, it looks beautiful. So that's something to look forward to because a lot of the time the creator warrior has remained the same. I think maybe since Dynasty Warriors 5 or Dynasty Warriors 4, it's just remained the same. So I'm glad that we're getting a genuine upgrade for the creator warrior system in Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires. Am I looking forward to the game? Yeah, I am looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. I just want to know 
whether or not we're going to get anything else for the 20th anniversary of Shinsangoku Muso. Uh, bear in mind that anniversary lasts for a whole year. For Mega Force's 20th anniversary, we had a few games. I believe we had Dynasty Warriors 9. We had Warriors All Stars. We also had uh, God Seekers as well within that time period. And I think Warriors Orochi 4 was also considered as a part of this special anniversary there. I doubt that we are going to see only one Shinsangoku Muso game announcement within this year period bear in mind the anniversary of Shinsangoku Muso happened like a month ago so it's still going to be within that year period we still might see game announcements or special updates I would just want to see part of me thinks Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires it feels to me like the game series is going to be coming back to form especially removing the open world although part of me wanted to see open world in an empires game but it would be very interesting because i would imagine that they would have to change up the maps design so i'm presuming we're going to either see returning maps from older games like we generally tend to see in empires games or we will see maps that were retrofitted from dynasty warriors 9 or even completely new maps this game is still in development we haven't seen much gameplay from it just an announcement so i would like to see more live streams from koei there are some concerns in regards to dynasty warriors 9 which i've been seeing on twitter in regards to how gameplay is going to work because there is no open world and the castles and there's going to be a new siege battle system but in terms of the capitals and the, the cities and castles the way they're designed is that they're basically squares with various sizes and we're not sure if we're going to have non-battle events even continuing with informal clothes for example like if you're in your castle and you're trying to you know relax or something and we don't know whether or not create a warrior will have informal clothes or not and a lot of people are asking if photo mode is returning and i'm not sure if it will i don't think it will do because the main point of a photo mode was to show off the scenery and the open world within dynasty warriors 9 i'd be very surprised if it does return for empires other than that like i said in terms of the cities and you know the the towns and the castles and whatever being squares i'm presuming that they're probably going to produce new fixed maps for battles or they're going to reuse maps from previous games 7 and 8 uh, kind of like how in 8 empires they reused old school maps and in 7 empires they did the same so i'm expecting that to be the case or like i said before that they will redesign the maps to make them more engaging more entertaining i do have a lot of hope for this game and because i am not a big fan of dinosaur Warriors 9 you guys know that and i did have my concerns about it i'm not going to really go into that but i had also my concerns with dynasty warriors 6 and empires redeemed dynasty warriors 6 and it basically gave us a bridge between 6 and 7. So I'm hoping Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires can do the same. So it can give us that bridge between 9 and 10. And also it could redeem 9 for me at least. I know a lot of people did enjoy the open world. And a lot of people are upset that the open world isn't returning. But I just want to see a return to form. So I'm personally, I'm very happy with the lack of open world. I really would have wanted to see it though in an Empires game. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you Jacob for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Especially at short notice. I'm I'm going to try my best. I've never done this before. I'm going to try my best to edit and put this episode out as soon as possible. I've never done that before. So if you like what we do, check out our sponsors, Crunchyroll, Japan Crate, and JList. Uh, also, check out our Discord because we are talking about Tokyo Game Show and what Koei is going to be releasing and all this other stuff on our Discord page. So go and join it, please. Come on. And that's it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.